Hi, these are the good people from Useful Effects, and for this tutorial, I want to do an introduction to the grunge effects that we can find inside Title Punch. As with all the Title Punch effects, they're designed to be applied to titles, but these particular ones are designed to give it a bit more texture and a bit more character. So you can take something that's very bland, very tepid, and really give it a lot of punch. Starting with a very basic title, I'm going to take from the Title Punch effects set, just drag Decay over, apply that, and we see by default we have some sort of texturing effect going on. There are two particular parameters you'll immediately want to start to play with. This is range and spread. Range describes how much of the original image is going to be destroyed. And spread will describe how far away from the edges it's going to occur. Now, by default, we don't really see that very well, so I'm going to increase the darkness parameter and make it a little bit more evident. And so you can see the spread is pushing it out from the original letters. Two more key parameters to use are the backdrop look and the distort look. The backdrop look will just slide between different texture maps that we've included in the bundle. And the distort look will slide between different decay maps that are going to give it some sort of character. You can also pull the texture maps back if you want. So if you want to go to a particular, just a blank color, that's fine. And this color is of course controlled here with the color pot. We also have this tinting parameter which is related to that, which describes how much of the color is there. Now it doesn't really make sense in this particular case because we're just on top of a blank color. So I'm gonna bring back the backdrop blend and you can say how much of that texture map is going to be combined with that color. Let's go back to the original map there. Now let's say you have established a look and you think this is great, this is what I want, but you don't want it to have exactly the same look every single time. You can go down to the random pattern and just slide different swatches of that particular set, but keeping the overall characteristic of it. You can also apply your own unique map if you want by going to the backdrop pop-up going from textures up to drop zone. You can also say none, let's do that first. So that will just obviously take everything out. Let's go to the drop zone, pop that up. We'll go to our browser. And here I have a map of uh, the original Braille map. We'll apply that. That looks kind of fun. Or let's try this texture map. You can also see that this texture map is interacting with the text itself. We're getting some texturing in there. So you really have a, a really nice integration between the background and the texture. We don't need the color pot here. Right, so this decay, smudged is very similar in how it works. Splashed, again, just a different set of texture maps, a different set of degrading maps, and they all combine different to give you a different result, but you're mechanically working more or less the same way. Two more, which are also very similar, are letters and subtext. These two differ from the other two in that they have an extra drop zone that can control the actual texture map. By default, for subtext, we have this English newspaper. Let's go ahead and switch it over to a drop zone. We'll use that Braille image, which looks pretty nice. And we'll perhaps scale that down a little bit, not too far. Invert that if we want. And there we have a nice, interesting, unique look. Now these next two, Disintegrate and Melt, don't have any texture mapping, but they do have a grunging effect, if you will. And they're very simple, very straightforward. So in this case for Disintegrate, you just move the amount slider this also has a look slider, so you can choose between different sorts of looks and how it's going to disintegrate. And of course, obviously, you would animate the amount slider to control, uh, to have it completely appearing or disappearing. At this moment, I'm going to take a quick pause because the shareholders of useful effects have gently suggested that perhaps I might want to throw in a very quick tutorial on how to animate. In this example, we have the disintegrate effect applied to some text, and I want to animate the disintegration of that. As we've seen, the amount slider will disintegrate the image, but now we want to animate it across the clip. 
So I will go to the beginning of the clip. Of course, I can use the up and down arrows. Be careful if you use the end of clip because it's actually going to go to one frame after the clip. So you actually have to pull it back just one frame and make sure that you can see the, uh, this, the fake sprockets along here to know that you're in the right spot. Let's go to the very beginning of the clip. And over here attached to every parameter, you'll see a little plus sign. If I hover over there, you'll see it says add a keyframe. That's the little gentle reminder of what that does. All I have to do is click that and I've now added a keyframe. You also see that that it is actually an X at the moment. This means that you're on a frame that has a keyframe. So if you press that, it will delete that keyframe. If we go to a different frame, you will see that X is not there. So this indicates to us that there is no keyframe. If I press this little arrow, I'll return to that previous frame that has that keyframe on there. Note that I don't have to press this every time I change the value. All I have to do is just change it. Once a channel is animated, it will understand that you want to continue to either modify or add new keyframes. So for example, let's go to the very end of the clip and I will just move this up. I don't have to press the plus. It's already automatically put in the keyframe for that particular frame. Again, I can use the little arrows and I can bounce between the, the two keyframes. And of course I can go anywhere in between if I feel that this midpoint needs a bit more information in there, I can just slide the amount back a little bit. You can also visually check to see where the keyframes are by control clicking on a clip, saying show video animation, and you can see the keyframes laid out in time. So for example, I'll just go to this frame here. I will just modify the amount slider and you can see that a keyframe has been entered. If I press the delete, you'll see that this has now disappeared. We can close that up, play through the animation, and we see that this does indeed have animation on it. And there we go. That's how we keyframe in Final Cut. Melt is very similar as well. Very simple slider set. And we have different sorts of texture maps that you can use for that destruction. One peculiarity about this one is we've included a background and you can disable that or enable it and of course choose the, a background color. That's a horrible blue. Let's never use that blue ever again. As with the other sets, you can use a random pattern if you so you don't have exactly the same effect every single time. So that's just a very basic quick intro to all of the crunch effects that we have available in Title Punch from Useful Effects.